Uh, it's a pleasure for me to speak tonight about growing up in Southport. And I don't know how many can see um, can see me, but I did a virtual background uh, because I'm uh, because I grew up on the at the yacht basin. I put a virtual background of uh, one of my father's uh, charter boats because that is uh, so much a part of of me growing up in my younger years. Um, I am Mary Ellen Watts Poole, and I'm a native of Southport, and I grew up, uh, I was born at Dozier Hospital as well. Uh, I grew up uh, where we lived was uh, in the Yacht Basin area. We lived at the end of West Street. It was the corner of West and Bay Street, and both of them were dead ends. And if you know where the Harborside condos are now at Southport Marina, that's where our house was. Uh, all of us, uh, as we get older and even growing up, we have, or I think most people relate uh, what was special about them when they were born or, or how you can relate it to. I always knew I was special for two reasons. There's <laughs> just me and my brother in the family. I was born on his sixth birthday. So he got to name me as six years old. So I always knew I was special because I was born on his sixth birthday. And so uh, I was my big brother's birthday, pre sixth birthday present. <laughs> the other thing about being special is I was born the year that Hurricane Hazel hit Southport. I was nine months old when it hit in October of 1954. Um, my father was in the charter boat business with his dad, uh, so you will see that uh, I put one of the charter boats in my background. So the Yacht Basin for me and my brother and my cousins, who we all kind of lived together in that area, and the neighborhood children, the Yacht Basin was our playground. That's where we played. And uh, as a friend of mine says, you know, we really had a childhood like Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer, how wonderful it was. And we would go crabbing, we would go uh, and, and uh, one the, some of the fish houses would give us a fish head, we'd tie it on a string and we'd go down on the docks and we would crab or fish off of those docks. And that was one thing we liked to do. We also had picnics, we liked to go to the edge of the marsh down around the Yacht Basin. Uh, a lot of it's been filled in now, but there was a lot of marsh, and we like to play on the edge of that marsh and uh, have picnics in that area. One of our favorite pastimes is that we would go do what we call mud bogging. At low tide, we would walk out, we would go down on, on the, at the yacht basin, and where the tide was low, there would be mud there, and so we would walk real fast on that mud in the hopes that we didn't sink and get stuck. So that was entertainment for us, and this was at, as a young child. Um, we spent a lot of time at the docks when the boats would come in in the summer when they did uh, charter boat fishing when they come in. That was the excitement to go down to for my family. Uh, as small children, we'd go down to the, the docks and wait for the boats to come in. Uh, my brother and the neighborhood boys would go down there as they got older and clean fish and, from the parties that, that caught fish during the day, and that's how they made money in the summertime. Uh, and I do want to say something uh, about the, the fishing business that was always exciting, and um, I do have a picture, and if you will bear with me, I'm going to try to put it on so folks will know what I'm talking about. Okay, if you can see it, let's see. This this is this is the fish that the parties uh, uh, caught during one day on the boats. That's my grandfather in the lower corner, and my dad is in the upper uh, corner on the other side. Uh, the fish that they have on the racks are sailfish. People love to come down and try to catch a sailfish because that was a big sport is to fight that huge fish with a reel and bring him in. And it was so exciting. Some people, they only wanted to try to catch a sailfish because what they would do is then have that fish mounted and hang it on their wall. And when the sail is opened up, it's, it's really beautiful. And when they, the boats come in, if a boat caught a sailfish during the day, one of the men would take his white handkerchief 
and they would do it up on the line of the boats. So the people, as they come into uh, to the docks at the end of the day, uh, people would see that they had that white handkerchief up there and they would know that they caught a sailfish during the day. So everybody was happy. The, the, the kids down there were happy to see those big <laughs> sailfish and because uh, they were huge. They were huge, but they were even more huge to us. Uh, and they were beautiful. The sail was beautiful. And the people who went fishing were happy because they caught one. And the, the captains and the mates on the boats were happy. Uh, that is it about my childhood. As I got older, uh, I did stay in Southport. I was fortunate enough to find a, a job where I didn't feel like I had to leave. Uh, I was able, uh, I went to college at uh, UNCW, so I didn't have, have to leave home. So I went to UNCW and also Webster and Myrtle Beach to get my uh, graduate degree. So I never ventured far from home for that purpose. I did uh, have in recent years to travel just for fun, but not to live. Uh, I did work for the federal government for 39 years. I had a 39 year career and uh, I worked at Military Ocean Terminal Sunny Point. And I always say that I had the opportunity to live anywhere in the world that I wanted to with my job. And I always decided I would stay in Southport. For the folks who went to Southport High School, can you explain to us how you started high school in the first grade? Okay, um, of school, I went to uh, Southport High School when I started school too, but I can tell you, I was not excited like Catherine and Mike were. I did not <laughs> want to go to school. Uh, Miss Mary Lee Norman was my teacher. And since I was the youngest of the family of cousins and my brother, uh, I was the youngest. And they all let me know that when I went to school, I was going to, uh, Miss Norman was going to straighten me out and that <laughs> she would be spanking me and uh, I would be a different child. Uh, so I did not want to go. So for <laughs> My mother said it was probably about eight or 12 weeks. Every morning when she took me to school, I cried. I cried, uh, sorry, I cried until I threw up every morning. And my brother who was now 13 had the job of taking me to the door. And he would take me to the door and tell me, okay, now go in, quit crying and you need to stay here. Well, I would scream and cry and follow him down the hall screaming his name. So I know he was mortified, but that was what, uh, how I was in the first grade. But after a while, I decided I would like it. And uh, after that, it was good. Miss Norman always said that I was the only child. And by the way, she taught Mike's, Mike and his mom. She taught my dad as well. She said I was the only child she had ever had that she thought could make it in Hollywood because <laughs> at that time they didn't have the term drama queen, but I think that's what she meant about me. But even as, uh, as an adult, I would see her and she'd say, oh, here comes Mary Ellen. You're the only child I ever thought could make it in Hollywood because you sure put on a show when you would come to my classroom <laughs> in the first grade. So, um, I went through through uh, the years at, at Southport, and then when I was a freshman is when the school burned. And like Mike said, all of this, all of the town stood around while that school burned and watched it, and it was uh, very emotional. Um, we had uh, I was a freshman in high school, and the rest of the year the high school went took classes at the Baptist Church in Southport, and then the next year we we were combined, and that's where I finished school there. Uh, I also uh, I'm going on off on another tangent because we went to a lot of basketball games and and football game mainly basketball, but uh, I remember also for Donnie. Uh, his school growing up, when I was real young, they had a band. And when they would practice in the afternoon, a lot of the town's people would go and sit and park and wait for that marching band to come by to listen to them play. So I can remember even before I was in school, my mother would put me and my brother and my cousins uh, in the car and we'd, we'd go somewhere and park and wait for the band to come by so they could we could watch them practice. Uh, because they were a marching band, and it was uh, it was pretty exciting for me. And I guess that's all I have. 
Thank you. And I never <laughs> skip school, Bob, so don't ask that. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, what's the funniest thing that ever happen happened to you? Uh, when you were in, in school? No, I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember anything funny happening to me. Um, the, probably uh, um, you asked us the other day what was uh, something embarrassing that happened. I don't know if anything ever embarrassed me, but uh, I guess what one thing I could say that I remember uh, was when I was in high school and some of us decided to skip school and we were going to walk to a friend of ours house who's dad worked uh, uh, during the night so we knew he would be asleep and we knew we could get his car so we <laughs> left school and we were going to take walk the back roads to his house well we saw the uh, one of the teachers coming in the student driver car <laughs> so we didn't want to be caught so you know it, it was uh, close to the school was a real wooded area this this was at uh, in high school at the location where the community college is now. And there was a lot of woods over there. It wasn't built up like it is now. And I remember we went in those woods and kind of hid uh, behind some trees and stuff. But the problem was that I had on a red blouse that day. And so the driving instructor said all he could see was that red blouse. So he <laughs> told me next time, I ne we didn't get in trouble, but he told me the next time I decided to skip to make sure I didn't wear a red blouse because that was <laughs> easily seen uh, when I tried to hide. <laughs> so I guess that's the only thing I can remember that might be humorous. Okay, thank you. That I can mention uh, in this forum. <laughs> <laughs> Since I've been involved with the Historical Society and, and when I did the coloring thing and, and today, it really makes you think and write about uh, down about how the area looked and how things were when you were younger. And I think it's an excellent time to remind people that that's what you need to do. I, I know everybody has their own special stories. And you, you don't really think about them until somebody asks you or you hear somebody else telling a story. So I, I think that uh, this is a good way to tell people, please write down your stories and, and tell your stories and think about them again, even if it's for your own personal uh, use, because it is very important. I know it'll be important to your family and, uh, and others. So that's all I wanted to say. You know, school, uh, Catherine, you know, talked about school and, and all of the activities there. It, it was a community uh, activity, a lot of stuff for people to do uh, in all of the plays and the, the, uh, the singing and, and things we did. Um, in the summer, um, a couple years, I think I worked as a waitress at, uh, at one of the restaurants. Um, I didn't ever get an allowance. Uh, that's kind of it. And so we always stayed close to home. Uh, my father being, you know, working in the fishing business, you know, he worked every day that the weather allowed him to. So we didn't go on vacation. Our vacation was my mother would put me and my brother in the car and, uh, and take us to visit her mother in South Carolina for the weekend. That, that was our vacation. So that's kind of what we did. My mother always said, why would you want to go anywhere? You And uh, my dad was born and raised in Southport, but my mother was from South Carolina. But it was my mother who always told us, uh, you live in Southport. Why would you want to go somewhere else? Nowhere else can be as beautiful as here. And there's always things to do and see. So why do you want to go anywhere else? So we really didn't go anywhere else. <laughs> We did go to the movies, and uh, you know we went to the amuse you. But I can tell you that is not my first recollection of a movie. At uh, when I was before I went to school, I can remember um, one night uh, my my dad uh, and uh, my mother's sister's husband they were babysitting me and my cousin who were very close in age and we weren't in school yet. I think they had a women's club meeting to go to. So they were stuck with babysitting us. And I remember they took us to a movie at the drive-in theater. There was a drive-in theater um, that was in the location on the corner of uh, Long Beach Road where Handy Hugo's is. 
there was a drive-in movie out there. And mm -hmm. I don't, I'm sure we fell asleep before the movie started, but I can remember the cartoon was Heckle and Jekyll. And that was the first cartoon at a movie that I remember seeing. Uh, I don't remember the first movie I went to that the Amuse You, but I remember that because of uh, of that we went. Uh, it was a drive-in, and uh, Heckle and Jekyll was the cartoon. So that's what that's a, something I remember. Mary Ellen, were you a mystery baker? Uh, no, I was not. Okay. <laughs> well, I will say that uh, in, in talking about that, uh, I guess I was in high school though. I wasn't in the younger grades, so it was in high school. Uh, I remember one Halloween, uh, we uh, we toilet papered one of the teachers' houses, and I guess with uh, the shortage of it now, the teacher <laughs> he would have probably loved it if that happened now. But one Halloween, we did toilet paper. Uh, his house, but um, that was kind of it. Well, who's, what teacher was it, Mary Ellen? I can't yeah. tell you. I cannot oh. tell you. <laughs> I cannot tell you that. <laughs> there were that many male teachers will deduce it down to. Uh -huh. uh, I'll tell you sometime. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess it was mischief, and I was, I was pretty young. I was uh, not in school yet. When my mother would go to the grocery store, of course, I was younger and had to go with her, and I remember sitting in the buggy. Well, um, my treat, I always got um, a Coca-Cola. You know, in the South, we don't say Coke. We say Coca-Cola. Anyway, I got a Coca-Cola in a little small glass bottle. That was my treat so that I would be quiet and be good while she was able to shop and put her stuff in the cart. And you, uh, one of the there was a, a gentleman who worked at the grocery store and he was stocking the shelves so he was kind of squatting down and you know how when a man squats down and he has his shirt tucked in his belt kind of gaps open at the back of his shirt in the back well i poured that coke in the back of that little tunnel there at, between his belt and his shirt and my mother said he jumped about 20 feet and I poured that coke in so kind of the story and up until that gentleman passed away every time he would see me he would say I hope you don't have a coca-cola with you but uh, anyway that I hadn't thought about that till my brother mentioned it the other day did I remember doing it and I had to admit I did but um, that's my story of, I guess things go better with Coke. I guess that's what I thought. <laughs>
ever ate uh, conks was at Lewis Dixon's. So that was kind of fun. Hmm. To add what Donnie said, Mr. McKenzie, um, his place was on House Street. I believe there is a beauty shop there, but it, it's close to the uh, water tower. He had uh, he had a little place in there and you could get ice cream. And my favorite was like Catherine's, was a grape sherbet. And he would ask you what he want. He was probably the kindest man, uh, hmm. uh, uh, older gentleman I ever met. He was real, um, he was, quiet and he was very kind and he would ask you what you wanted and then he would chip the ice off of a big block of ice with an ice pick and then he had this huge metal uh ice cr uh, ice crusher that he put it in and i mean it sounded like a a, a, a jet engine going when he chipped that ice up um and i know he made all of the syrups himself um but that was a, a good place to go. It, it had a, a real great feeling when you walked in the door. Mary Ellen, do you have a story you would like to share? Uh, you know, I didn't, but I just remembered one that we touched on briefly the other day. When I was in the first grade, the USS North Carolina uh, <laughs> was brought to Wilmington. And I remember uh, the school kids, we took milk cartons and covered them with, uh, with, uh, with paper. Uh, to uh, and decorated and that's what we used to collect pennies and that money was sent into the state to bring the USS North Carolina to Wilmington and I remember I was in the first grade and uh, our teacher Miss Norma took all of us and all the other teachers took the children in their class too and we went and sat on the garrison lawn while it went up the river and so I remember that uh, at that time, little girls couldn't wear pants to school. And I remember sitting on that garrison in a dress and the <laughs> sand spurs got my little hiney down there. But um, I remember at the waterfront, uh, that was a big day and everybody in town, you know, went down there and, and watched it go upriver. It was quite exciting. Thank you, Mary.